Hey everybody, so glad that you could join me today. I want to talk to you guys about something that's really been on my heart and on my mind and something that the Lord has been dealing with me about, uh, the power to break cycles. Um, this is something new, something that I'll be doing um, for a while, um, probably either weekly or bi-weekly, just talking about different things going on. For those of you that know, I used to have a a radio show and so now I'm just going to utilize the Facebook live as well as um, Periscope and the other outlets to really just talk about certain things that's on my mind and on my heart so the power to break ineffective and unproductive cycles there's a popular saying that is attributed to Albert Einstein which states insanity is doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results what is it within humankind that causes us to engage in a level of repetition that is counterproductive and destructive to our advancement? What is it that causes us to return to things, situations, behaviors, and people that weaken our strength and disrupt our growth and progression, ultimately resulting in our diminishment? What is it that causes us to accept a life full of uncertainty, insecurity, and obscurity? What is it? One of the major things that causes us to remain in what we should have released is our inability to cope with the absolute truth about what it is that is going on in our lives. Many of us have the tendency to reject the absolute truth about our reality. We would rather live in mental and emotional bondage instead of dealing with the truth. The truth about us, the truth about who we really are our personality flaws, our weaknesses, our failures, our real socioeconomic status, not the one that we try to exude through wearing name brands that we cannot afford and name dropping, but the real one, the one demonstrated in our checking and savings account as well as our zip code. The truth about our intellect, our progression, how far we are in life, our regression, how behind we are in life, our regrets, our past, the trauma that we've encountered that's produced a level of damage and dysfunction within us. We have a hard time approaching this. Not only this, but also acknowledging and accepting the truth about our social relationships as well. Um, what relationships in our life are really authentic? What relationships are counterfeit? Who has embraced us? Who has rejected us? Who has nurtured us? Who has abandoned us? Who has affirmed us? And who within our circle, within our families, within our churches, within our communities, has murdered our confidence? Who has molded us and who has molested us? Answering these questions from a place of complete honesty is extremely hard. It's extremely difficult to cope with this. So instead of dealing with it, what we do as people is we have the tendency to bury it even though it is not dead. We repress our pain as a defense mechanism um, and we decide to live in a place of oblivion and denial. We block out the truth from our awareness. We refuse to admit the issue exists to preserve our, con our confidence and our emotional climate because rejecting the truth and the responsibility that comes with the truth um, is a lot easier. Uh, but easy is not always better. Easy is not always the answer. There comes a point in life where you have to face what is in front of you. You have to look in the mirror and acknowledge who you are, where you are, uh, what has happened in your life, um, and really just take control over the trajectory of your life. You know, and for my believers, yes, God does know the plans that he has for you, plans of good and not evil, plans to give you a hope in the future, plans to bring you to an expected end. That is very true. But you cannot line up with the plan or reach the expected end living in a place of denial. You will forever be stuck in stagnancy until you make peace with the truth of your reality. It's very important that you make peace with the truth of your reality. The truth that you are over 30, 40, maybe even 50 and are being forced at this point in your life to start over from ground zero. The truth that the business that you have invested your life in is not producing. The truth that you are broke, not because you're black, but because you have bad spending habits, because you have no integrity with money, and you have bad credit history. 
the truth that you are over 35 and unmarried because you have yielded yourself to dead end situations and have took on willingly the position of a concubine or a live in girlfriend. The truth that you were molested as a child, raped as a teen, and now you are at a place in your life where you are fighting lust, perversion, and promiscuity. The truth that they walked out on you and are never coming back, and because of this within yourself, you feel a level of inadequacy. In order to break the cycles that you are stuck in and trapped in, you have to make peace with the truth. You have to acknowledge this is where I am, and you have to accept the absolute truth of what has happened and take the responsibility for your part in your past. What we do as people is we often pass the baton and we often put the blame on other people and we do not take responsibility for our part in our past. One of the reasons many of us do not have peace is because we have displaced anger. And the displacement always ends in dissatisfaction because you are not dealing with the truth behind your rage. You are not dealing with the truth behind your pain. You are not dealing with the truth behind your anger. The truth is for some of you, you are not angry with them. I know you keep saying, oh, I'm angry. They did this to me. They did that to me. You're not angry with them. Underneath it all, you're angry with you. You're angry at the fact that you have permitted people to treat you beneath your worth. You're angry at the fact that you were not strong enough to walk away seven years ago. You're angry that not they took, but you gave your life away, years of your life away that you cannot recoup. You're angry at the fact that you allowed yourself to succumb to generational transmissions, like having four kids by four different fathers, and you vowed you would not be like your mother. You're angry at the fact that you have eaten your way into hypertension and diabetes. You're angry that you've allowed your pride and greed to cause you to hold on to properties that you know you should have sold when there was a buyer's market and now they were foreclosed on. You're angry with the choices and the decisions that you have chosen to make. That's for some. For others, uh, the truth is you are angry with people. You're angry at the fact that they violated you. You're angry at the fact that they dishonored you, angry at the fact that they did not value you, angry at the fact that you gave all of this, all of yourself, all of these things, and they did not reciprocate the loyalty and energy that you gave them. You're angry that as, the, as a child, your parents did not protect you, angry at the fact that they neglected you, angry at the fact that your father or your mother abandoned you. You're angry with the way that you have been handled. And guess what? You have a right to be angry. No one is trying to take away your right. You have the right to be angry about everything that has happened to you, but you cannot afford to live in that place. You have to release it, not suppress it. You have to release it. You cannot continue to suppress it, smile, act like everything's okay, and then go back to being tormented when something happens that causes it to rise up. Can't suppress it, smile, be tormented when something happens and then bury it and repeat the cycle over and over again. There comes a point where you have to be honest with yourself and deal with what you're struggling with. And the starting point of that, the starting point of breaking the cycle begins with acknowledging that there is a cycle and that there is an issue. Many times we, we have the tendency not to admit that we are dealing with cycles in our lives, that we are dealing with repetitive, dysfunctional situations. You know, we, 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 we have the tendency to call it what it's not and live in a, a place of distortion psychologically, but you have to call it what it is. No more excuses, no more rationalization. You have to take control of your life. Admit that you are in a cycle and then make peace with all of the elements surrounding that cycle. That's all I have for you today, but I'm going to come back tomorrow. Um, so definitely join me. I'll, I'll leave some updates, but um, I definitely, you know, I will open the floor for some questions. Are there any questions at this point? Any questions at this point? And I'm just, I'm just seeing what people are saying at this point. 
Yeah, you have to you have to make peace with the truth. You know, a lot of times we have the tendency to suppress it. We suppress and we suppress. And you know what we do? We operate in a level of fanaticism. And we say, oh, God is going to handle it. God is going to fix it. God is going to do it. And yes, God does have the power and the authority to fix and do things. But you have to take control over your life and stop waiting around for God to do it and participate. You have to participate in, in shifting your life from where it's at. You know, participate in becoming whole. You know, um, yeah, we often say the truth will set you free. But really what's happening is we're still operating in a place of denial and we're not freed. We're in bondage. We're shouting in bondage. We're dancing in bondage. We're going to church. We're in our communities. Check this. We're trying to help people still bound still in psychological prisons, still in emotional prisons, still in financial debt. When really what the Lord wants you to do is be honest about what you're going through, honest about what you're dealing with, honest with yourself that you're in a cycle and then take control and authority over your life so that you can break the cycle. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Join me. I'll say about 1 p.m. and we'll be live. So I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.